Teach me how to love you like I don't know yet. Everything that occurs in our life is created by us. Excited for tomorrow. Had many similar days. Expecting a significant change in my life on the morrow. I was running. I needed to run somewhere at all. It's just how alive I am that it hurts so much right now. And here is where an honest conversation with oneself begins. How many millions of people in the world and madness just suffer from loneliness? Madness to learn to appreciate the moment when it really hurts. Every morning I wake up, I realize that I have a new build of a new day. Hey everyone, dear friends, I'm truly delighted that we have a fantastic guest, Elena Fasik, in our studio, a lot of you. Elena is the creator of Transformative Programs and Breathwork Practices, and she is my online friend because we have been acquainted for a considerable period, but we have only recently connected to produce incredible content for you. Hey dear, how's it? Hey Olenka, what you're saying is that we were virtually acquainted, and now there's been some quantum entanglement between us. When we meet, we have this connection that lasts forever. When you are in tune with yourself and with the higher power, who calls it what, who interprets it how, you have a completely different level of perception of the world, a different level of communication, acquaintance. For instance, I observe that the Supreme Being is engaging in the identical discussion with me. Individuals enter and they simply lift one another. They may not be acquainted with each other. But recently, it has been like something out of a movie. They still have knowledge of each other, kind of indirectly know me. Someone has seen me before. And then it all got twisted up. And, you know, I realized that I know everyone, not in the literal sense. Everyone knows me. The whole world knows about me. And my only task is to accept it and, uh, to the best of my abilities, explore the world because it is, of course, huge and infinite. So something grand is coming up. First question, what I wanted to start with. When people hear transformational practices or transformational methodologies, breathing practices, it's a pretty common expression these days. What is the distinguishing factor between what you do, what you're involved in, and everything else that sets it apart? That's the vibe, the motivation of a person and that point, the entrance to the state of love from which something can be done, it determines the overall outcome of a person. Because like you said, I know everything and everyone and I know the whole world. If we dig into this topic and go into a little bit of historical part, then Basically, no one exists except me. No one exists except you for your love. And of course, you know everything. And when a person enters their life, I once had such a question when I asked my heavenly teachers and so on, teach me to love myself like I don't know yet. Well, you know, I'm exploring this path. Can't claim psychologist despite having degrees. I'm exploring. And when I started asking this question, how to learn to love like I don't know yet, people with a minus sign started coming to me. And I thought, I'm like, I'm already on top. I work with people. I'm all about kindness. I'm all about love. These outcomes are incredible. And in this particular inquiry, different circumstances began to occur to me. And at a certain point, you stop yourself and say like, wait, did you ask for it? So your super task at that moment was, you know, to love the good ones easily. And when you're in a blissful mood, it's easy to love. Sure thing. It's like Ayn Rent in Atlanta. In my opinion, Atlanta shrugged its shoulders. Happiness is the source of nobility. When you're in a good place, happy, you want to spread love and bless everyone near you. And you'll try doing it from the ass of life. You know, it's like people who meditate. Give me some peace and quiet. I'm going to meditate in peace and quiet right now. So we should also love when we are in a good mood. Yeah, everything in life is good. We are really good and comfortable doing it. Yet every single occurrence in our life is a product of our own making. This is the end result and manifestation of our thoughts, emotions, and overall state of being. We shape ourselves today based on who we were yesterday. When situations like this start happening, that's when mindfulness kicks in. Because you can choose to go the old way and get caught up in this emotion, it starts to control you and you can't think straight anymore. Either you stop and ask yourself a question, so you asked for it, and you also need to learn how to love somehow. Here is where an honest talk with oneself starts. I realized that, like, this is probably my superpower, surrounding myself with people. She is a selfish woman, if you truly analyze it, because why so self-centered? I enjoy spending time with badass individuals, with fascinating individuals. I'm not cool with saving anyone. And when we stood once on the same step with people who, like us, were just starting their own development and I heard such stories, someone said, I will heal people, I will cure people, I will save, therapize, and so on. And for me, even back then, it was unclear because I had written in my small notebook that healthy, happy, fulfilled, and wealthy individuals come to me. And Lena, what is the reason they need your presence and expertise? Well, this is my game. 
And I know that if a person comes and asks me a question or if they come with some problem, ailment or whatever, it doesn't matter. I already know the outcome. And during this period, I have truly got my observer excited. So this magical occurrence takes place very rapidly. I don't like therapeutic work for 20 sessions for five years and so on. Just spend 15 minutes chatting and having coffee with someone and everything becomes clear. I am in agreement with you on every single word, dude. I am genuinely a nice person, but at the same time, I can be tough and resilient when the situation calls for it. I'm the boss. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a person with clearly defined personal boundaries. When people see this, they are so amazed by it. I'm a practical person in many ways. I don't want to waste time without any specific feedback. I've already tried it all. I already know for sure what I need and what doesn't work for me. And this doesn't sit well with some others, not everyone. It's a sign of immaturity when people don't accept someone else's desire to be strong, to have status, to be confident, to be happy, and not to waste themselves on suffering. I'll agree that most likely so, plus it's also a lack of responsibility, it's maturity. Blaming others is easier than taking responsibility, shifting fault instead of self-reflection when trying to understand the situation. In this situation, it's me. What do you want me to bring? This is a continuation of the question you asked yourself. Why should I come to you if I'm strong, healthy, and happy? I have a theory that all requests are about the same thing, so to speak, about. Same thing too. About money, recognition and love, friendship, relationships, alliances. Here's the thing, what you said, you know, in 15 minutes they won't believe you. There are real crazy stories, huh? Of course, there's psychosomatics, work, not just one expert and so on. But the scene where briefly, Lena is a certified psychosomatics specialist, so it's not just speculation, it's a diploma holder telling you. Yeah, and you can even cure complex diseases, but if a person then ends up in the same environment, all messed up and goes back home, if they're not supported there and not going along with them in this force of change, then naturally they start sliding back to where they were. So here the question is not only about the person shooting themselves, but also about working with their environment their family, and the head of this family. For sure, because once you get there, everything becomes a whole different ballgame. But when it comes to emotional states, what's going on in the body? Five question. All through body. Good at reading body language, work with body. You know, like I always say, used to grow through pain, but now not necessary to do that. Now you can grow through love. And the generation that is coming now, they already know how to grow through love. There is no need for it at the moment, but it used to be like that previously. And when I was down there, I began questioning myself, like, what am I experiencing? And here is where the explorer went on such a journey. I started studying absolutely everything from science, psychology, and esoterics. I do not deny any model of any kind, truly. If it is going to be psychology, that is acceptable and fine with me. If someone tells me that it's a tautology or something else, I'll say, okay, that works too. I'm not ruling it out. We'll talk about it later. What does it even give us when we don't exclude any model? And I'm very skilled at comprehending the body because I examined it thoroughly and extensively. I used to practice faith therapy and acupuncture. I'm currently studying insidology. Everything is going perfectly. I was curious about how this car operates and why it elicits such reactions. Check the bod, entered psych, insufficient, not enough. I want to see a shrink. Psychosomatics enables us to fully grasp that illness is not merely an illness, but a cause and effect relationship of circumstances a person has encountered in life. Just initiated studying this subject insufficient. And in this location, through emotionally experienced trauma, I started to develop sensitivity, empathy skills. You know, it's like some kind of esoteric stuff, but on the other hand, it's totally accessible to everyone. When you can read minds, it's a deep understanding of feelings. Let's go back to the fact that nobody exists except me. So here's the entry point of the situation. Let's go there, change our mind. The person starts making different decisions. The body relaxes. The symptoms go away, so we don't need much time for this. List out what people want. Well, all the things you mentioned, they actually exist. These requests are real, and every person desires love. But when a person arrives and discusses love, when I desire to love someone, frequently it is a highly selfish thing, because they also desire to love. From which place do you desire to do it? What's the motive? Yeah, what's the motive? What's the feeling? What's the pain behind it? What's the point? Fills what? Either you have so much excess or you're paying the mortgage for two. I'm joking about this topic. And here's the key motive. And when we clear away the underwater rocks, then the request basically falls away on its own because the person has such a strong connection with you and love for life. How many millions of individuals in the world and the madness simply experience the effects of loneliness? Crazy town, but you gotta really want it, man. 
money. It's a constant request, you know, in different ways. I get it. For some, it's about growth. For others, it's about their team. Again, leave a trace for someone. But that's linked. I need money for that. Money also matters. Some of the key things to consider are money, health, relationships, and the pursuit of fulfillment in life. Currently, many individuals are endeavoring to discover their path and destiny in this moment. Even for me, destiny is an incredibly elusive concept, as it encompasses not just one possibility, but a multitude of potential paths that can be remarkably vast in number. And what I am currently doing, this is my calling, right here, right now. Do not be afraid to make changes when necessary. Each time I was performing a task, I had various business enterprises and so forth taking place in that location. And for me at that time, it was my calling. Well, how could I have known that I would lead people, a person who is afraid of public speaking and can't string three words together at all? Right now, your words should have brought a sigh of relief to our viewers about the fact that there is more than one purpose. And maybe at this very moment, you are finding yourself in it. You didn't even realize it. Yeah, if you're craving something else, it means you're on your way to a different destiny. Because very often people understand this topic as a lifelong journey towards one thing, and there you will find yourself, and then grace will come. This is like delayed happiness again. It's somewhere out there in the future. Not here and now, so mark this thought for yourself too. It will definitely resonate with you. Returning to the interview topic, the search for oneself is the focus. People express this request in different ways, either in a more abstract or practical manner. As a mentor, it is important to understand how to approach individuals and inquire about their motivations and identities. I am completely finished with this entire story. You know, when you ultimately come up with a request or something, or for example, when a person asks a question and expects an answer from me, I'm done playing. There were a lot of people, there were a lot of courses. And at a certain point, a couple of years ago, I came to the realization, damn, this is not what I desire. And then the longing to be surrounded by individuals who are strong emerged. And I began working in a completely different manner, started redirecting the individual, his, her responsibility. And the dialogue, therapy, everything unfolded differently. It all came together in a different way. This is powerful, as many people tap into their own strength. Here's the thing. That's what I actually hear every time. I went in my own power. When I met you, I didn't have a clue what it was all about. And I just went on my own power. This is really cool. Getting back your strength or regaining strength. This expression came to me just recently from my personal situation. We just had a conversation and suddenly it hit me. I regained my power because I was in a weak position there. However, I sort of reversed the situation. It was more akin to a decision made by a manager, but all of a sudden I experienced a completely different feeling. Not that situationally I won the argument or brought a more weighty argument. I regained my power. I wrote it down in my diary and you say you're bringing back the mojo. It's important for people to regain power. And as Konstantin Tarasov, the owner, wrote in one of his books, actions should come from strength, not weakness. While attending Donievsen's training, he imparted a profound phrase that has stayed with me. The more I am called to give to this world, the more I am compelled to take action, and the more the divine starts to lend its support in my journey. While she was talking, I saw him for the first time. I didn't know him prior. I comprehend that Lord, a 69-year-old man who is much elder than me, is more experienced. The fact that my thoughts and feelings align with this world, for me, it was like tuning to the same frequency as a master. I got it. Yeah, truly, I'm still moving forward. Can't help but ask, how did you come to this? She also mentioned several stages in her life. I know your biography, but it will also be important for viewers because it was a more down-to-earth, glass-filled life, a successful business. You were involved in all of this. And it seems we just mentioned from trauma, from pain, from some offense, to come to something new, there is one way. From realization in one, this is another way. What was your journey like? How do you define it yourself? I came here in a more masculine incarnation because women come here more yang-like, men come here more in-like. We must cultivate feminine energy and men must cultivate masculine energy. We had a rough time with us. To keep things interesting, you know, for the sake of the experiment, it's easy to see gender differences are visible. I have evolved into more of a man in a specific form, and it was extremely painful to discover the truth about my woman. Visually, everything was great, like, but the interior was so damn harsh, I guess. The visual aspect was impressive, but the experience was really tough. I simply recall that it was a business, it was a constructed family, I had an infant at that time. Seems like all is good. I'm strolling down the street with a stroller, the sun is shining bright kid, everything's awesome in your life. A true family. You're building a house here. Business is booming and I'm excited for tomorrow. And I've had many days like this. 
I'm strolling down the street, awaiting tomorrow, hoping something will change in my life, something will alter. You are tearing your body apart, your mind. Our task is right here and right now, in this very moment. I am presently experiencing life. I am observing you. We are discussing interesting topics at the moment. Maybe someone will be affected by this. Something will happen to someone. Some decision will be made. All right, I'm here in the moment. I'm totally here energetically. And there your body is present here. Your thoughts are there. And we constantly tear apart our system. And I had such stress. Well, it's unclear. Probably they call it depression. That I just lay down, cried, don't want anything. Out of sight, out of mind, the child came up and I was simply stating, go to grandma. However, nothing made me happy. There was no explanation for this at all. I just realized that I'm probably dying. I lost weight in literally three weeks, maybe about 15, 18 pounds. So the weight was quickly disappearing. And my brother called me. He was already living in Moscow at that time. And he calls, he says, Len, come over, have some fun. And I came here to have some fun. There were also a bunch of different trials there because I came back, literally spent a week sold my little business and got divorced from my husband. So like I was running, I had to run somewhere, like totally. Do we get depressed or how does a person get into an abusive relationship, you know? Very sneaky, fight or flight, like in the animal kingdom, or freeze and they'll eat you in that very moment. So I decided to run and I ran away. And when I came here, I sold my two businesses there and came to stop the paperwork. I have all the diplomas, basically a large package of documents, money. I am handling all these things. On a beautiful day, someone shattered the glass in my friend's car and stole everything from inside. And wouldn't you know it, it was the day I needed all the documents. Well, it's like I'm gone. I don't exist in this world. Further, on one particular occasion, an individual knocked from the lowermost part. And that's when my first therapist showed up in 2014. Before this, I thought that all the psychologists at Chevrolet were colleagues. Sorry. Yeah, some still think that way. Can you share the stories, how it was and how it became? I know people like that too. This is true for both men and women always. This is also true. I'll handle it myself. I know myself who is better than me. The initial therapist was in 2014. That is the time when I did not have any friends or anyone here anymore. Had a brother, but he left. Now I'm alone, no money, no job, no way to confess it to the parents, completely helpless. Well, I mean, that's not an option. Everything was great there, and here I don't have anyone. My brother helped me with housing, and I need to start over. Starting from scratch. And then this psychologist came into my life and sent my mom. And I cried for five hours. I didn't even know that it was like that. So when they had never looked in that location previously, and there it was, the Pandora's box had just been unpacked. And that's when I started studying psychology little by little. That was just my zone of interests. Well, I mean, it turns out that formally, it's like you flew out of one prosperity into another prosperity, but there's such a huge gap between them that it definitely doesn't fit. And what fits me is still unclear and needed. Search and so on. You know, it's like an art. Learn to appreciate the moment when it truly hurts, even if it's difficult to endure. Because at present, healing is occurring in this place. And when we commence blaming, we prolong it over a period of time. And someone is stretching and already going to the other side. And everything is still there with these grudges. I would like to discuss with you about the dead end of meaning. We all encounter him multiple times in our lives. However, perhaps there are individuals who do not. Truth doesn't make it there. This is a question. But at a certain point, you reach a dead end. Then you overcome the obstacle, these challenges, discover significance and continue after a couple of years, 10 years, another dead end of meanings. This statement's meaning, in terms of discussing my identity, purpose, and your work with affluent, established, adult, mature individuals, and I believe there are more obstacles in that context. Perhaps I will surprise someone. I feel trapped in significance multiple times every day. Category. I understand you. You know what I'm saying? Correct, considering the speed at which I'm going. Nevertheless, I am very close to the historical world as well. Counting, being a busybody, and so on. Every morning when I wake up, I have a new build and start my day. I comprehend the processes at the eternal system level. Our seventh center works actively at night. And there are ongoing planetary changes that we cannot halt or prevent. So naturally, we're like a part, some elements of this system. These changes are happening exactly the same way here. I heard the term divine freebie from a scientist. These changes are happening anyway, dude. Every morning I wake up and realize I have a new build of a new day. When someone tells me, let's plan a trip in six months, I'm like, please, I don't even know where I'll be in two days. You bet. I always have my passport because you never know when I might need to fly. Suitcases came, designers dressed me, you know why. There's no way to lug around stuff. No way, Jose. And this dead end of meanings, it happens practically every day. I have a cool technique. I'm on fire. Well, you know, like this totally throws me off, you know. 
so I can already wrap my head around it and start analyzing a little bit. Right now, I need to take a break, just take a deep breath, exhale deeply, either take five minutes to catch my breath, do it all with some music. I'm just asking, what's the next move? That's it. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, I got a whole lot of trust and faith in me. We gotta level up this thing. So understanding yourself, trusting the world, and then the speed of your changes, decisions, transformations, and goal achievements increases exponentially. I still sometimes wonder, you know, you haven't even had time yet. You are already finishing the sentence and it is already happening. And I definitely know that it's a acquired skill. Listen, we try to give as much practice as possible in our broadcasts. Perhaps you mentioned breathing. Could you please inform me about how to perform it? Because these are a few of the most feasible ones to incorporate into any lifestyle. Ride elevator, take breath, sit in car before moving, take breath, can do it however you want. In bathroom, even if live in one room apartment, close off, take breath and so on. Tell me, here's what and what kind of practice would you recommend using in order to come back to yourself and to take it with a clearer and brighter mind if you remove it? In general, the energy context and discussing physiology and now breathing is utilized in medicine and aids individuals in overcoming conditions like depression, suicidal state, and so on, it is still worth paying attention to and should not be underestimated. Because when we breathe, we saturate the cell with oxygen. There are certain exchange processes at the cellular level, at the level of chemistry, blood composition, and so on. So it's worth checking it out if you want to stay young and healthy. I've been doing all this for a long time, and people who have been with me for five years have left for seven years. Chronic illnesses, allergies, some skin inflammations are interconnected. This is fading. I've tried different methods, chakra breath, energy breath, holotropic breath, bong hit, ventilation, and so on. And I really like this practice, like the one Wim Hof does. And he's a guy who sits in the ice, walks in his underwear in the mountains with just one hat to keep his ears from freezing, and boots and shorts and everything. So they were telling him that you're a real phenomenon, but he said, nah, give me a group of people and I'll whip them into shape in two weeks. He got ready and they went. Everything is on the edge of my seat too. And it's a really cool practice. You can just do it every morning and evening, like when you go to sleep. 30 deep breaths, 30 repetitions, inhale, exhale. We're breathing so hard that our stomach, chest, and even our head are puffing up. It will be a deep breath and a gentle exhale. Take a deep breath and let it go. Not directly, simply that we are in the process of dropping it. And that's how we pump like a champ 30 times. And then when it's the last time we take a breath, a slight release, and here, right here, we hold our breath in the middle. You can either do a 21 delay, or if you're already practicing, you can do a max out. Basically, you have to work on yourself to learn how to hold your breath for as long as possible. And that is the moment when the process begins to occur. Why? Because like, if you place it in extremely simple terms, the brain believes that the body is undergoing the process of dying and it begins utilizing all of its resources to preserve this body. That is why they have updates and alterations in the blood chemistry. You know, it is like when a mother in distress picks up and saves her child, throwing away all of the resources. But that's a really good boost for your body. This is like a rejuvenation process, I would even say, for the whole system. Here's the maximum delay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can hold your breath for a long time, but right now I can do it for up to three minutes. I can't do more right now. Sweetheart, I appreciate your efforts and I'm eagerly looking forward to the upcoming release. 